Hey guys, this is Aaron with iBoard Repair and today I'm working with an iPhone 13 Pro Max. It's in here for data recovery. It's reported as just randomly dying. It wasn't dropped and it wasn't water damaged. I haven't done anything to it yet. haven't even cracked it open. Um, the only thing I have done is plug it into my USB ammeter here and uh, observe the uh, amp draw and it gives me a zero amp draw. So I'm going to crack this open. We can take a look at it together and see if we can solve it. Okay, so I have the screen off. Um, the first step I like to do with completely flat dead phones is to uh, see what my DC power supply does when I touch the probes to the battery connector. And that always gives a, a good bit of information. Before I do that, I'm going to verify which side is the power line and which side is ground. I never quite remember on these newer phones. So the top's the line, the bottom's ground. So I'm getting an amp draw before prompt to boot. So that's fine. Um, that's a very solvable problem. In case you missed it, I'll show you what I'm, what I'm looking at. This number up here is spiking. So that's the same as if I were to touch these two together. Um, usually that will indicate a main line short or a, uh, a boost line short or a couple of other lines can also show, um, be a problem when I see that. So I'm going to pull this motherboard out of the housing and let's, let's see if we can find a short on this board. Alright, I have this motherboard out of the housing. Uh, let's take a look at it. Most likely I will have to split this motherboard, the two different layers. Um, and, and look at the inside to see what's going on. Most of the time the shorts are going to be on the inside. But I do have a few tricks to see if that's going to be necessary or not. I have seen this chip short before, so if that was the case that would be, that'd be great because I wouldn't have to actually split this board. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my thermal cam and I'm going to see where it looks like the heat's showing up. Uh, in general, I like the thermal cam uh, as a first step because I can see like where the heat's showing up even if it's on the inside of the motherboard. And once I have like a more clear idea of where the short is, then I usually switch over to um, free spray because it like really lights up which component is which. So I'll grab the thermal cam and then I'll inject voltage into my uh, battery connector here and then let's see where the short uh, where the heat goes. Actually, before I even do that, I, I'm just going to measure VCC main or VDD main and uh, see where it might be, uh, where the short might be. I, I got to see where I can find a point on this. So I'm going to pull up my uh, board view software and see if I can find it. So it looks like I have a component right here by one of these battery con or um, camera connectors that can tell me if it's uh, a main line short or if it's a different line. So this, uh, this capacitor right here is on uh, VDD main. I took the capacitor off. It's not really a big deal. I can still measure the pads. Take my multimeter and uh, measure. Uh, this side is ground. This side is the line. And it is uh, VDD main. That is short. So that's fine. Just a common VDD main short. I've dealt with that plenty of times. I haven't actually seen it on a 13 Pro Max yet, but this is a very, very solvable problem and I like to, I like to see these because it's almost surely going to be recoverable. So yeah, I'm going to inject into this line and uh, see if we can find where the heat's showing up. So it will most likely be pretty tough for you to see. I did already kind of take a look and I have an idea. I believe it's right in this area here. See if we can find it. Yeah. So it appears to be heating up right here. Can you see it? You can't see it all. Yeah, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to be able to see that but I'm seeing heat I'll show you on my scope 
So during editing, I realized that the area I wanted to show you was not actually recorded. It's underneath the shield that I'm about to remove. So you can watch that process. So there's a couple capacitors I could look out for. Um, this one, I think, and a few of these ones. What I was looking for. Yeah. So I'll try injecting one more time, and let's just see if it happens to be one of those capacitors. Because if that's the case, then we'll basically have solved it already. That would be great. I use more free spray than normal when I'm working with these double stack boards just because it has to like get frost. It has, it has to make the whole, all layers cold. Wow, that is lucky. Will you look at that? That's a beautiful thing to see. So this one just lit right up. That's our problem. So once I remove that capacitor, this board's gonna work. I don't have to split it or anything. Um, what's great about this is that now the phone itself is gonna work as well. If I had to split it, then I would have had to reball it in order to make this phone work. Now that won't be the case. It was this one, I believe. So that was quite a beautiful thing to see. Very, very glad that's the case. And as you can see, if I zoom in, this, it doesn't look like anything's wrong with this uh, capacitor at all. It's just, uh, you know, it's just short on its own. So obviously the customer didn't do anything that would cause this to become so a short. This is just a fault with the motherboard, which um, it happens quite commonly. Of course, I see more of these than a normal person would because people look for me when they have a randomly dead phone, um, but I see stuff like this quite often. So once this re is removed, it looks fine kind of all the way around. I don't see anything wrong with that. Um, now if I measure at any of these lines, it shouldn't measure short anymore. Yep, no longer short. Ground, not ground. Last time it was ground, and then now this is not ground. So I'm really glad I pulled this off rather than just going straight to splitting the board. Um, this is a, a simple problem to solve. Not everybody 
you know, a lot of people default straight to like a CPU transplant when it's, it's not necessary a lot of the time if you just kind of take the time to find where on the board the problem actually is. So I'm gonna grab a, a battery and a screen. The housing they have actually should work. So I'll just use their housing and I'll put in a good battery and uh, let's see if it boots up together. So I went ahead and put the motherboard back into the customer housing. I'll attach the screen. And a little known fact about the 13 Pro Max that makes it a little bit different than all the other phones, even in the 13 series, is that the 13 Pro Max needs to have the proximity flex plugged in or it will reboot every three minutes. So I, I don't know why that's only the case with the 13 Pro Max, but, but it is. It's already verified on other other 13 Pro or other 13s that, that's not the case. So battery's plugged in, screen's plugged in. Let's see if it will prompt with the power button. And there we go, we have an Apple logo. So that's great. Double check the password here. We're booting, everything's working, and passcode is good, so we're in. So that's a great thing to see. This one wasn't too difficult. I think most shops should be able to do like basic motherboard uh, diagnosis like this. Um, a, a VDD main short is a very common problem and it's it's something that's not too difficult to, to solve. You just need to be able to find a few signs. Um, you know, my DC power supply showed me right off the bat that I had a mainline type short and my multimeter confirmed that it was VDD main by measuring at that capacitor right there. Um, I used my thermal camera to see kind of the general area where the heat was. And um, I first thought it was gonna be inside the layers of the motherboard, but I took the time to remove that shield, use some free spray, and I was able to see that it was just a, a capacitor on top of the board that went bad. And again, a customer didn't do anything to make this bad. This is just a fault with uh, Apple's motherboard. Sometimes they just go bad and there's nothing really you can do. That is why they have like a one year manufacturer warranty, um, but that doesn't do anything to help uh, for your data if you haven't been backing it up. So the customer is gonna be really glad that I pulled this data for them. And uh, you know, it was an easy video. So I hope you, uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you stop by again. Thanks, bye.